Welcome to Greater Faith, where we are moving our faith into action. Our mission at Greater Faith is that we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and the beliefs of the Christian faith, to maintain the worship of God, and to inspire all persons a love for Christ, a passion for righteousness, and a consciousness of their duties to God and their fellow human beings. We pledge our lives to Christ and covenant with each other to demonstrate His Spirit through praise, worship, faith, and ministry to the needs of the people of this church and the community. concludes our morning announcements. Now let's usher the spirit by giving God the ultimate praise.
morning, good morning. Stand up on your feet this morning and give God some praise this morning. Uh, y'all can do better than that. Y'all can do better than that. If you had a great father, make some noise this morning. If you had a great grandfather, make some noise this morning. If you had great uncles, make some noise this morning. Amen. Amen. We want to start out this morning by saying happy Father's Day to all the fathers, the ones in the sanctuary and the ones that are watching us as well. It is a blessing to be a father this morning. Amen. I'm going to start off with our scripture this morning. Our scripture is coming from uh, 2 Samuel 7, uh, verses 14 through 17. I will be reading from the NLT version. 2 Samuel 7, 14 through 17. Amen. And God's word reads this morning. I will be his father and he will be my son. If he sins, I will correct and discipline him with the rod like any father would do. But my favor will not be taken from him as I took it from Saul, whom I, re whom I removed from your sight. Your house and your kingdom will continue before me for all time and the throne will be secured forever. So Nathan went back to David and told him everything the Lord had said in this vision. The word of God for the people of God this morning. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. And since it is Father's Day, we're gonna take a couple of seconds, man, real quick, y'all. Uh, a father is someone that you look up to no matter how tall you grow to be. Mm, watch this one. Any man can be a father, but it takes a special man to be a dad. And the power of a dad in a child's life is always unmatched. Let us pray this morning. But gracious, most gracious Father God, we thank you for another opportunity, Father God, to serve you this morning, Father God. Father God, I ask that you bless greater faith, that you bless greater faith, Father God. Bless this service this morning. Bless everyone in attendance this morning as well, Father God. Father God, I just ask that you just continue to pour blessings into us, Father God. And Father God, I ask that you uh, just continue to crown this lead service here with, knowledge, not of will, with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding this morning, Father God. Father God, we know that you have sent a word this morning and so that he can break it down and make it plain for us today, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray and I praise. Amen. I'm going to do our mission statement at this time. Our mission statement reads, We the people of greater faith believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and the beliefs of the Christian faith. To maintain the worship of God and inspire all persons. A love for Christ, a passion for righteousness, and a consciousness of their duty to God and to their fellow human beings. We pledge our lives to Christ and covenant with each other to demonstrate his spirit through praise, worship, faith, and ministry. To the needs of the people of this church and to the community. Amen.
worship and adore you. Hallelujah. We praise you this morning for being a good father. Have you been a good father to anybody? Hallelujah. He's been a real good father to me. So Lord, we bless you. We thank you. We praise you. We pray to give your name the praise regardless of how we feel. Lord, I have a headache this morning, but I'm pressing my way through because I serve a healer. Hallelujah. And as I'm praising him and worshiping him, he's working on my head right now. He's working on my body. So Lord, I bless you for being a good, good father, a good healer, a good protector. Hallelujah. 
I want to thank you, Father, for loving me in spite of me. You continue to love me. Hallelujah. I want to thank you. Anybody else want to thank you this morning for being a good father? Some of us may have naturally good fathers, and that's great, but we have a heavenly father. Hallelujah. That continues to love us and protect us and continue to provide for us. Hallelujah. Despite us, he still loves us. Lord, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for your sacrifice. Come on, y'all. We need some praises in the house this morning. But don't mind standing to your feet and lifting up your voice and lifting up your hands and doing a dance for the Lord. Because he's worthy. Hallelujah. We serve a great father. Anybody else believe in this morning? He's worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. The song said he's perfect in all his ways. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. We want to thank you, Father. Does anybody remember a place that you were that you know that you shouldn't have been? But the Father came and rescued you. Hallelujah. And he saved you. Father, we just want to give you the glory. We thank you, Father, that you deserve all the praise. And no matter if nobody else raised their hand this morning or lift their voice, I would do it, Father. Because you saved me. Hallelujah. When I was sinking, yet it's deep in sin. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, for reaching and grabbing me, Father. For protecting me and keeping me. So this morning, we just want to thank our Father for being so good. Hallelujah. We just need 20 seconds of somebody that has a radical praise on this morning. Somebody that knows that he's been better than good. Somebody that can't keep it to themselves. They got to tell their neighbor. Tell somebody how good he's been. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that was a time where I didn't have a home to live. Hallelujah. But the Lord provided. Hallelujah. And now I can say, Lord, I thank you. Just last week, I didn't have a dollar in my pocket. Hallelujah. But all needs have been met. Thank you, Jesus. We didn't go home.
Lord rescued my life from drugs, sin, guilt, abuse, being rejected, overlooked, scorned, talked about, homeless, backstabbed, beat on. Come on, y'all. Overlook. You have rescued me from so many things. Locked up, Father. From the graveyard, Father. Come on, y'all. Out there in the world without my mind right now, you have rescued my life from depression. Amen. You have saved me, Father, from so many things. It's only right, great faith, that we can just lift our hands up for just a few moments. Clap your hands and give them praise right now. If he saved you, if he brought you out of something, come on. If he saved you, if he brought you out of something right now, if he's breaking you out of something right now, then you go ahead and testify and give him some praise, give him some honor, that I never would have made it without you. I never would have made it without you. And my response is, hallelujah. The highest praise, hallelujah. Come on, church, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I'm going to call the deacon down. Deacon, can you come down one second? shape, form, or fashion, either for our outside show to the dying world. But Father, we come because you declare that every knee must bow, that every tongue must confess. And Father, this morning we come confess that we all have sinned and fallen short of your everlasting word. And Father, we thank you that our eyes flew open to a day that we've never seen before and to a day that we never see again. And Father, on this day, we tell you thank you. Father, we tell you, thank you for your son, Jesus, and how glad he died on Calvary's cross. Now, oh God, we thank you on this day, oh God. This particular day, oh God, that was set aside to celebrate fathers. Father, many that have children, many that don't have children, but Father, those that are father figures, oh God, we lift them up to you today, God. Father, for we realize, oh God, that some may be somewhere else, oh God, but Father, we thank you, God, that on this particular day, God, that you have set aside just for Father to be honored, oh God. Father, we don't get recognized like we should, oh God. But Father, we tell you, thank you. Father, some been, been set aside and said they've been dead beats, oh God. But Father, you don't raise us up, oh God. And Father, we tell you, thank you, God. Oh God, we come at this particular hour, at this particular place, oh God, called greater faith, oh God. And Father, we lift the man up to you at greater faith, oh God, we, and we tell you thank you. Father, we ask you, oh God, that you will let them be the beacon in this community, oh God. Then, oh God, we come praying for every man over this universe, over this nation, oh God. Not even just in Tennessee, but all over this land. God. Father, we ask you in this hour and this season, oh God, that you let us be the men that you have called us out to be in these last and evil days, oh God. Father, let us be set aside, oh God, 
Father, let us be looked up to, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. And Father God, we ask you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, every curse that has been put on the men, oh God, we break it today in the name of Jesus. And Father, we call men forth in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you, oh God, that you will raise them up wherever they might be, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I ask for this prayer. And Father, we do claim it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I do thank you, God. Amen. Now I'm going to ask the deacon to pray over our young men that is represented here as well as represented in the community. We pray for the fathers. Now let us pray for the sons. Most gracious Father God, we come to you this morning, Father God, just thanking you, Father God, for the children, Father God. Father God, I just ask that you just continue to cover the children, Father God. Father God, for this world is, is, is in such a dismay, Father God, that we have to pray for our children, Father God, especially the young men, Father God. Father God, I ask that you touch every young man, Father God, that is, that is under the sound of my voice and every young man in this world, Father God. Just continue to mold them, Father God. Make sure that they have someone in their life, Father God, that they can mimic after, Father God. Father God, for we know that there is no manual to be in a man or a father, Father God. It is all on the job training, Father God. And we do the best we can with what we have to work with, Father God, and we get the rest from you, Father God. Father God, if there are any perfect men in this building today, Father God, let them say something. Amen. I know there's not any perfect men in here, Father God, and I am far from perfect, Father God, but I just ask that you just continue to mold me into the man that I'm supposed to be, Father God, into the father that I'm supposed to be. Even though my children are grown, I still father my children. The grandfather I'm supposed to be, Father. Hopefully one day the great-grandfather I'm supposed to be, Father. Just continue to mold us, Father God. I ask that you just continue to bless the, just the, the, the young men of greater faith, Father God. Not just the greater faith, but of the world. Father God, just keep them covered in your blood, Father God. Keep the armor around them, Father God. Do not let the enemy take them, Father God. In Jesus' name, I pray and I praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Come on, y'all. Let's give God some praise. If you have your particular Bible, we ask you if you have your Bible. Uh, today we ask you to turn to Hebrews, Hebrews 12, verse 7. Amen. Hebrews 12, verse 7. Hebrews is very, very known as known as the hall of the hall of fame of faith. Amen. Hebrews 12, verse 7. When you find it, do play it to do plan standing for the reading of the Lord's word. When you do find it, please stand for the reading of the Lord's word. Hebrews 12, verses 7. Hebrews 12, verses 7. We ask everyone to please stand up, kids, if you are able to stand as well. If you are able. We like our hardback books here at Bright of Faith. If you have a phone, that's, a, that's cool as well. But it's great when you have your physical Bible and you're searching the scriptures with it. If you have your physical Bible, take your finger, pause it right there in that particular passage, close it up, don't lose the verse. Raise them high in the air. You can take your phones as well. 
Greater faith help me say and wave them like we just don't care. Amen. Um, God word reads. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father? Amen. May God have a blessing to the reason he is endures of his holy divine word. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Pastor, that we, we're, we're faced with a different time of being a father. We're faced with um, all types of setbacks of being a father. It seems as though there's restrictions when it comes to being a father. Even at the moment that you may have a mother that truly doesn't believe in a father discipline their kids. And here you are when it becomes a stepfather or even a father. Sometimes they say that if you're going to, if you're going, to, if discipline is needed for my child, I need to be the one that discipline my child. And here in this time that we're living in, as the word of God is told, as endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who has never been disciplined by its father. We can also say that whoever heard of a child who's never been disciplined by a stepfather because there has been a lot of fathers that have abandoned the post. There's been a lot of fathers who are not in the household, but the mother has entered into another relationship with a father that has stepped in the place and to be the father. But the word said, whoever heard of a child who has never been disciplined by his father. It doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be the original father, but right. it could be the right. father that he has placed in that life of that child at that particular time. Pastor, I... I asked myself, what were we going to ask God? What do you want me to talk about today? Do you want a sermon that basically is going to be something that can ease and stroke our egos? Or do yeah, we want yeah, to yeah. Um, preach the word that you want to give to me, God? I, and I asked him, whatever you give me, God, I'll be I'll be glad to preach it. Amen. We, we could have gave you a sermon there, Brother Malcolm, saying the, the legacy of a father. We, yeah. we could have gave you a sermon that was saying that the role of a good father. We, right. we could have right. gave you a sermon saying that a father doesn't make mistakes. We could have gave you a sermon that said a father that provides for the family. We could have gave you a sermon that says that a father never abandoned his family. I could have gave, we could have gave you a sermon that said that everything that I do, I do it perfectly. Amen. But God gave me a sermon today that said it's never easy being a father. Come on, talk to me. It's never easy being a father. And the fathers throughout this sanctuary right now that's watching tell you, and even mothers, I include you right now to say that you know that it's not easy being a father or even being a mother. But come on, y'all make some noise. We, we know that at times we, we have to ask ourselves, are we doing this the right way? Are we saying the right things? Are we leading the family in the right direction? I'm not talking to anybody. We know that at times, dear pastor, that it's never easy yeah, being yeah. a father. All the fathers make some noise if you're, if you're with me right now. Listen, it's never been easy of being a father. I have made mistakes myself as a father. I have done some things and I didn't do some things as a father. One of the things that I make mistakes in, and you can say with me, that we don't spend enough time with our children or even with our kids. We put everything else before them instead of saying that some things will have to wait. Some things have to go. Amen. But my child needs me. My child doesn't need to grow up without a father. Fathers, y'all talk to me this morning. Amen. We have made some mistakes that we wish that we can take it back whether with the wife or even with the baby mama that we probably had. Amen. Before we got married and some of us probably got more than one baby mama. Y'all talk to me. Amen. We have made Made some mistakes as a father, we can all say that it's not easy being a father. Amen. And sometimes you got to be able, be able to be a judge, and also you got to be able to keep peace on both sides. Amen. If you if you like any of us in here right now, you may have a mother here and a mother there. Amen. And sometimes it get confusing because you try to make everybody happy. You want to keep both households cool because if this mother act up and this mother act up, you know that there's not going to be no peace. Amen. You know that the kids may need diapers. You know kids may need clothes. You know they may have a football game going. Y'all talk to me. You know that it's never been easy being a father. Amen. Because we made a mistake. If we stayed in God's will, we probably just had one baby mama. 
we're not talking to anybody, but we know that every once in a while we step out of the will of God, amen. And we start to do things and stuff our way. But when we come back in the will of God, even when we made a mistake, amen, you start to see that God had his hand all on it, amen. Am I talking to anybody here that got, the, got the plan that is never easy being a father? Men know that if, if, if we, we, if we want to put our life, we can put it as a, a book, amen. A, a, a book, amen, that says that every once in a while when you read a book or when you look at a movie, you, you see that in the movie, amen, it could be boring, it could be, amen, the, it could not be scripted right, it could be written wrong, amen, but there's something good that you find in the book. Am I talking to anybody? There's one particular thing that you find good in the movie. Amen. It may be a movie that you probably fall asleep on, but you wake back up and find one particular part in the movie that you remember that you like. Amen. Well, man, that's just like us. Amen. When we look at fatherhood, amen, everything hasn't been good. Amen. But there's been a particular time and a particular day that you'll forever cherish. Amen. You may have been fussing. You may have been going through a divorce with your wife. Amen. And now y'all split up, but you look at your particular book and you look at your movie. You said everything wasn't always bad. Amen. We had our good days and we had our what? Bad days. Amen. I had some good days with my child and I had some what? Bad days with my kids. Am I talking to anybody right now saying, as I look back over my book of my life, amen, I can see that some days were strange than the other, but now I start to see that I had more good days than I had bad days. Amen. Because look at me now. Amen. I'm able to look at my child and, and smile and be glad at them. Amen. That they're not going down the same path that I went through. They're not saying the same thing that I'm saying. Amen. Am I talking to any fathers right now and saying, when I look at my seat, I see everything that God was doing. It's, it's never easy, Deacon said, being a father. Oftentimes, that when we got daughters, amen, they seem to think that we are hard on them when it comes to these knucklehead boys, amen. Sometimes, and, and, and even mothers in here, how your father was hard on you when it came to these knucklehead boys. We're going to keep it clean. When it came to these knucklehead boys, amen, your father already knew what type of the boy was before you even saw him, amen. He walked in clean. He walked with his pants pulled up. He walked in talking a good walk. He walked in groomed up, amen. But being a father like we are, amen, some of us, I, I won't say all of y'all, amen, we've been down that road where we were uh, a knucklehead ourselves, amen. We did and said things just to get the girl or even get hit. I'm going to keep it clean, amen. We know the game that was played, amen. And so when a child, when, a, when my daughter brings a boy inside the place, I'm able to peep him before he comes through the door, amen. And I have to pull him to the side and let him know, yeah, I know your game, amen. I hear you talking. You talk the good talk, amen. You walk in the good walk, amen. But I know once you get outside this door, what you're going to be saying to my daughter, amen. And sometimes you got to put the fear of God in, amen. Lay a hand on my daughter, and this will be the last one that you ever touch. Am I talking to any fathers in here right now that beat the game of anybody trying to run game on your daughter? Even now, some of you women in here are old and even older. Amen. And if you still got your father, you remember when you had your father, he even picked the game on your booth. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. You know when you got older, you see the thing that father don't know what he's talking about. Amen. Father don't know that he's putting them hands on you. Father don't know that you're out there smoking and drinking with him and you don't look like the daughter that I raised. Amen. Father knows everything. You best believe that. Amen. Father knows when you're going through it, but sometimes Sometimes father just can't step in. He got to let it run its course. Am I talking to anybody? Father sat back and he's praying that you find your way out of it. But make no mistake, if it get too rough, father going to step in and air it out. Am I talking to anybody? Whether it be a boy or even a girl? Father knows best. It's never easy to say that being a father. Uh, again, like I said, that we look at the magazine, uh, 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 the magazine for it said that fathers right now, 500 fathers said that they would never, ever, if, if they take a poll right now, amen, they said that, Max said more than two-thirds of 500 men surveyed this one said that it's harder today being a father, amen, it's harder today than it was back then 
of being a father because back then it seemed as father had it made they didn't have a lot of stuff they were facing with today amen today we're faced with all type of stuff i mean stuff now are outside the closet can i just talk for one second amen we, we're faced mother right now mother with all type of stuff amen first we, we used to be um we used to tell our young men and tell our young daughters, amen, grow up and be a respectful young man. Grow up and be a respectful daughter, amen. Now we got to tell them, amen, listen, God didn't create you to be what you are, amen. We got to be straight up, amen. You want to, you, I, I, I named you as Sean Jr., but now you trying to be Sean Wanna, amen. Am I talking to anybody, amen? It's hard that right now you want to be able to tell them, amen, their identity. You you got a, you got a child that's going through an identity crisis, amen. You got to remind them. Amen. The world may say this is who you are. Amen. But God created you to be this who I know you are. Amen. Y'all not going to talk to me this morning. Amen. It doesn't matter. Amen. If you stray out for a while, I'm going to be there. But I just can't accept some of the stuff that you're doing. Amen. I can't allow some of that stuff in my house. Amen. I can't allow you, amen, to be disrespectful to me in my house. I told you it's harder being a man right now. It's harder being a mother right now, a parent all together. Amen. Amen. When you got a disrespectful child that's trying to tell you what to do in your house, amen. Trying to tell you how to spend your money, amen. Tell you how and where you should go. Am I talking to any parents? It's hard right now, amen. Because we want to lay hands on you and put you in your place, amen. But they call that thing called the law, amen. But I don't care, amen. Disrespect me in my house and the law ain't you can get it. It's hard being a father right now, Malcolm, when you see that your baby or your son is out there in the world, amen. You want to be able to grab them, but the more you grab them, the more they resist and fall deeper in the world, amen. You want to tell them what's around the corner, amen. But they've been around the corner, they got hit in the head a couple times. It's hard there, man, being a father, amen. When you see your son or your daughter locked up in the jail cell and there's nothing you cannot do, amen. It's hard being a mother or even being a father when someone don't touch your child. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. It's hard being a father right now. When you got grandparents, amen, when you want to lay it down, grandparents want to come along and soothe it out. Am I talking to any fathers in here? It's hard right now being a father, amen, when you want to tell them all about Jesus, amen, but they're faced every day with everything to say that Jesus is in real. Am I talking to anybody here right now? It's hard being a father when the world seems to have more influence on your child. It's never easy being a father. First point, let me get on out here. We, we, the first point that I find out here, Mary, one of the things that we did as fathers right now and deacon is that one of the things I find out that we didn't do, Pastor, is that we didn't read the instructions on how to be a father. We didn't read the instructions on how to be a father. Amen. A lot of us didn't read the instructions on how to be a father, Deacon said. We, we didn't read the instructions. Amen. The, what we saw and what we read was that she's thick. Y'all not going to talk to me. Amen. What we read and what we saw, amen, she looked good. What we read was that, amen, she smelled good. What we read was that not I could spend the rest of my life with her, some of us right now, amen. But what we saw was everything that we shouldn't have seen. Am I talking to anybody? We saw right now a woman that dressed good and, and smiled and pleased and do some stuff in the bedroom that would blow my mind. Am I talking to anybody? We didn't read the instructions when it came down to being a father, amen. The first thing that we thought was, amen, how long would it take, amen, to get the covers back? Am I talking to anybody? The first thing that I had, and a lot of us thought right now, amen, amen. She, everybody's chasing out of, amen, what must I do, amen, to get her, amen. Y'all not gonna talk to me, fathers, amen. We didn't read the instructions on right now on the things that we need to do as a father. The only thing that we wanted to do was to get clean. We saw pleasure more than fatherhood, amen. We saw, amen, good time more than fatherhood, amen. We didn't see her as 
a wife. We didn't see her as a, a child of my mother. We didn't see her as an eternal partner for the rest of my life. We just saw pleasure, amen, and everybody else chasing out her. We didn't read the instructions there, Pastor, amen, what it takes to be a Godfather, amen. We didn't read the instructions what it's going to take to provide for the family. We didn't read the instructions on what it takes to be a God-man that's fallen God's way. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. So the instructions simply say that in order you want to be a Godfather, you got to go do some things. You got to go do some pain. Amen. You you got to go do some violence before you find your wife. Amen. We didn't read the instruction, Pastor. Amen. In order for us to get a wife, it's going to be a good mother to our kids. Amen. Not leaving the kids with grandmama and grandfather. Amen. Or leaving with sister or auntie. Amen. Every weekend. Am I talking to anybody here? We want it. We got to read the instructions that right now that tells you he that finds a wife. The men didn't say anything. The women stood up and looked. They started looking around with their heads rolling back. Finds a good thing. Amen. In order for in order for us to be a good father, we got to start reading the instructions. It's not too late. Amen. To a father that's not speaking to his kids, it's not too late to a father that don't spend time with his kids. Amen. Come on, y'all, talk to me. It's not too late right now to read the instructions. Amen. That say that you are blessed. Amen. In the eye of your kids. Amen. That you walk. In authority among your kids. Amen. I don't want my kids to be disrespectful to me. I don't want my kids not to talk to me. Amen. I don't want my kids to want to have anything to do to me. Amen. I want my kids right now to love me. Amen. Smile when I walk in the room. Amen. Know that my decision that I make is the right decision. Amen. I don't want my daughter to grow up now. Just like me, amen. I don't want my son to be just like me, amen. I want my daughter, I want my son right now to find the internal help, man, amen. Man, you know right now we have broken down our body from going from bedroom to bedroom, amen. House to house, amen. Am I talking to any fathers right now that said, we got to get this thing right, amen. Read the instructions yeah. 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 on how to be a God-fearing father. You never... You never are too old, man, to be a God-feared father. You understand? You're never too old on getting this thing right. Amen. If your kids not speaking to you, it's time for you to speak to them. Amen. If your kids don't want anything to you, it's time for you to hurt them and make them mad. Am I talking to anybody? If your kids right now don't want to call you on the phone and say, hey, how you doing? You call them and you bug them every chance you get. Y'all talk to me. It's never too late right now to be a God-fearing man. But first, we got to read the instructions, amen. The instructions is simple. It's in the biblical text, amen. The instructions tell you how to live a godly, fearing man, father life right now. We got to get in the Bible and start applying the Bible to everything that we do, everything that we say, amen. If our kids are acting the way that they are acting right now, it's only two things. It's because they're under attack of the adversary or they're watching and they start to do what you have done, amen. I saw, I know the biblical Bible, so I mean, I'm getting so clever with it now, Pastor. Abraham had a son also, amen. When Abraham lied, amen, his son lied, amen. And he told a lie that his wife was his sister, amen. And the son turned around and told the same lie and said that his wife was also his sister, amen. Learn behavior, man, amen. If we don't straighten this up right now, our son would continue to do the same thing that we are doing, amen. You live a life with many women in your life, amen. What you think your son gonna do? What you think your daughter gonna do? They're gonna go from house to house and bed to bed, amen, because that's what they saw father, father do. And a lot of us won't confess, a lot of us won't uh, admit up to it that I, I have learned some behavior from my dad. Amen? Is that true? Did anybody learn some behavior from their dad? And sometimes the behavior can be good, sometimes it can be what? It can be bad. Amen? But now I'm asking God to help me with all the negative and wrong stuff that I'm doing that I have picked up from my, from my father. We have to read, Mayor and Matt and, and Malcolm, we have to read the instructions on how to be a God-fearing father. It doesn't mean that I'm going to be a father just because I laid down with it and, and then she tells me, amen, nine months, you're going to be a father, amen. Oh, that's good news, amen. But now some of y'all say, man, I made a mistake, amen. Hey, come on, y'all talk to me, amen. You want to make sure that you make the right choice with the right woman, amen. 
making sure that when you read instruction, you don't do stuff that you shouldn't be doing before the marriage. Amen. The second point that I saw here, greater faith, it says right here, what? For us fathers, this is for our fathers, the mothers may not get it, it's hard to ask for help when we are having a problem. Amen. It's hard for us to ask for help when we are having problems. Amen. Men, can you clap today? Can we make some noise that sometimes it's hard for us to ask for help when we are having problems? Men, we have been we have been built on as this uh, Terminator, uh, strong Hercules and and Hulk. Amen. We've been thinking that we have all this strength. We've been built on never to break, never to fall, never to give in, but stand on the word of God. Y'all talk to me. It's hard sometimes when we are having problems to turn to somebody else or turn to the wife or turn to your boot day and tell her, look, I need help. Amen. Today, I'm stressed out. Today, my job has got the best of me. Today, church seems kind of strange. Amen. Today, even my family has turned against me. Today, I'm having financial problems. Today, I'm feeling sick. Today, I'm stressed out. It's hard for us to ask for help when we are having problems. Y'all talk to me right now. It's hard, amen, to ask for help when we are having, what, a bad day. And me can tell you right now where we often have women and, and, and mothers and, and, and wives and ask, them, hey, what, what's wrong with you? Why you don't want to talk to me? Why you don't want to be able to talk this thing out? It's because of how we was programmed. It was never programmed to be what shown weakness or, or, or letting everyone see that you are vulnerable, that you're going to do something. And that's the reason why you ask him, you look at him, he, he, don't, he don't ever want to talk to me. He, he never asked for help. Amen. It's because what was being placed on on the inside of us. Amen. But today I say, fellas, that we're going to open our mouth up. Amen. If you want to know what's wrong with me, I'm going to drop it on you. I'm going to lay it on you. If you want to help me, I'm going to ask you, yeah, I need help. What do you mean? Financial. Come on, y'all talk to me. Amen. I don't necessarily have to go out and get it from Peter and Paul. I should be able to get it from the same people that are in my circle. Amen. They ask you for help. Amen. They tell you when they are sick. They tell you to pray for you. Amen. Now, why is it not a right for us to open our mouth, men, when we are going to do something and let them know, amen, I need a helpmate, amen, I need someone to talk to, I, I need someone for you to pray for me, I need for someone to help me out of this situation, amen, instead of going to the jail, instead of going to jail or to prison, let me find someone that's willing to listen to my problems, amen, to help me in some tough times, amen, help me when I'm depressed, help me when I'm stressed, Help me when I'm financial strap. Am I talking to anybody me and me right now? Then I'm going to let you know yeah, yeah. what I'm going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today I said I'm going to hold you long. Your third point final. right? I like this last one right here. Amen. That's going with the biblical text. Listen. Fathers have a unique thing that's on the inside of them. Come on. There's something special about fathers that's on the inside of us right now. Come on, man, make some noise with me. There's something on the inside of us that make us unique, amen. And I like to say what only what's on the inside of us that make us unique is something that came from the heavenly Father, amen. Y'all talk to me. Something that is on the inside of me that was God giving me, amen. And, and one of the things that I wanna say that's on the inside of me is that I would never Give up. Amen. Talk to me. I never will quit. Amen. What all the fathers said that I never gave up and I won't quit. Amen. Come on, mothers. You can say to me, say, there's something on the inside of me that I can't quit and I can't give up. Amen. When I think about giving up, something on the inside of me lifted me up and pushed me on. Amen. When I think about throwing in the towel, that something in me right now that stopped my hand from what? Going in the towel. I, I can't quit. I, I can't give up. Amen. I come to four. Amen. To turn back now. Do I got some fathers right now saying, I can't quit. Amen. Because what's on the inside of me keep pushing me all the days of my of my life. And when I look at this, this little particular gift that we have on the inside of us right here, Pastor, I, I see that we have the similarities of our Father which are in heaven. Come on. Think about all the stuff that we have done that went against our Father's 
rules. Come on, talking to anybody. Think about how many times that we have sinned and sinned against his house. Amen. Think about how many times that we have taken his name and turned it into a, what? A mockery. Amen. Think about how many times that we have lied to him over and over and over again. Come on, y'all talk to me. Think about how many times that we have disappointed him. Amen. Day in and day out. Come on, talk right away. Amen. Think about how many times that we have turned our back on him and walked away. Think about how many times that we have bucked up and ready to knock up. Think about how many times, amen, we have taken for granted what he has given us. Y'all not talking to me. Think about how many times that you have Worship and serve another God. Amen. I tell you, you serve money. Amen. You look at a fancy car. You look at fancy clothes. Amen. Think about how many times that you have put something before God. Amen. My father is not to be played with. My father is not to be joking around with. I serve a good father. I serve a God that still provides. I serve a God that never gave up on me. Is there anybody just like me saying, I serve a God that still raising the dead. I serve a God that's still healing the sin sick. I serve a God that's still providing when I ain't got anything. Anybody talk just like me say, I've got a father that's still that's still looking after me. My father has never given up on me. When he should have gave up on me a long time ago. Amen. I got a father that still look after me. Amen. When he should have walked away from me a long time ago. I got a father that still provides for me when I took the money and what? Had fun with it. Am I talking to anybody? I got a father right now that still welcomes me with open arms right now. Amen. When my earthly father has walked away. I got a father right now that still what? What? Wrap me up when I'm, when I'm lonely at night. Amen. I still got a father that tucks me in at like at night. Amen. I got a father that's able to wake me up in the morning. Am, am I talking to anybody right now? They got a father just like me. Amen. When my earthly father steps in, amen, my real father steps up. Amen. When my earthly father said that you are not my son, amen, I deny you. My father said you are my child and I never deny you. Is there anybody like me right now that said, thank your father for being the best father that you can ever be. I got a father right now, amen, that when I was in trouble, amen, Nobody accepted the phone calls. Nobody came to visit. Nobody wanted anything to do with me, amen. But my real father, heavenly father, accepted the phone calls that came and seen about me, amen. I got a father, man, amen, that when I got sick in my body, amen, and was in the hospital room, amen, nobody came to visit, amen. But my heavenly father was all in the hospital. Y'all not making no noise right now. Where is the ones that say, I got a true father right now that still is able. I got a true father that still provided, that still protected. I got a true father, amen. I don't have to worry about my earthly father letting me down because my heavenly father would never let me down. Where are the ones that want to clap and say that? I got a real father that I always throwing up when everybody else is leaving me. I, I got a real father right now, man, amen, that's still able to tell me that everything is gonna be all right. I got a father right now, amen, that still say that just wait on it. Where, where are your folks in here right now? They constantly, he's constantly tell you to what? Wait on it. Stop being anxious for the house. Stop being anxious for the extra income. Stop being anxious for that man. And he simply father tell you what? Wait on him, amen. Just wait on me right now. I'm never late. I'm always on time, amen. See, the problem that I have with us, amen, we don't read scripture, amen. The word of God said that the foundation was laid before we got here, amen. If the foundation was laid here, amen, why not my blessings was already here before I got here? Y'all not listening to this, amen. Meaning that when he created man and created woman, he already knew what we was going to need. When we're going to need it and how we're going to need it, amen. When the foundation was laid, amen, we 
just got to get to the blessing. Amen. Meaning that I ain't got to walk towards it. I'm going to simply wait on my father. Amen. A lot of us are impatient. We can't wait on him. Amen. We want to jump on the bicycle and ride without no training. We want to open up Christmas gift without, without no instructions. We want the boo and we want the fancy house before God give it to us. Amen. God said, just wait on it. Amen. You won't be in debt. Amen. Wait on it. You won't be going what? On your third or fifth marriage. Am I, I'm not talking to nobody. Amen. Just wait on it. Amen. You won't be going down that line again. If you just what? Wait on it. We are in debt and we own all these relationships because we just haven't waited on him. Amen. Forget what the world say that you, you look like you're lonely. Forget how the world say that you look sick and you look depressed. You got to tell them, no, nah, I'm not lonely. I'm not depressed. I'm not without. Because my father said that I would never be without anything. Amen. Do I got any people right now that say, you may look lonely, but I'm not lonely because I'm waiting on God. And whatever he want me to have is coming my way. I ain't got to run to get it. I ain't got to lie and steal to take it. I just simply just got to what? Wait on it. Amen. I ain't got to steal it from him. I ain't got to take it from her. I just got to sit here and just wait on it. Amen. You got blessed. Hallelujah. You got blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. You getting blessed. Hallelujah. Why are the people that said, said my blessing? Y'all not excited right now. Say, you got blessed. Look at your neighbor. Look at her real quick and say, you got blessed. You got blessed. Do the Oprah thing. You got blessed. You got blessed, you got blessed, but I'm just sitting here, what? Waiting on my blessing, amen. I'm not going to jump line for it because the word of God said that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Go ahead and get your blessing, amen, because I'm next in line to get my, to get my blessing. A father has this unique, like I told you, thing on the inside there, Pastor, is that I'll never give up waiting on God. I'll never stray away while waiting on God. Amen. And this is the part I'm closing out. And let me go back to it. Listen to this part right here, uh, Pastor. Amen. It says, as you endure divine discipline. Divine is spiritual. It says that as you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own. Amen. Who ever heard of a child who is never disciplined by his father. Amen. Let me get this. Amen. All the stuff that I have done, I welcome the divine discipline. All the stuff and lies that I have told, I welcome the divine discipline. All the lies that I have said and things I did against you, come on. I, well, I welcome the divine discipline. Amen. I'm so thankful that God is what disciplined me. I'm, I'm so thankful that God put me in time out a time or two. I'm so thankful that God keep whooping me. Amen. Boy, all the other people are just like me and say, thank you, God, for what? Never giving up on me. Thank you for disciplining me. Amen. Because if I would have kept on doing things my way, I would never saw it your way. Amen. If I would have kept on living my way, amen, I would never start living your way. Thank you for your discipline. Thank you for treating me like I am one of your own. If you are one of his own, go ahead and make some noise right here. If, if you, I'm going to say again, if you are one of his own right now, make some noise right now. If you have made a mistake against your father and you're sorry, make some noise right now. Come on, if you have fell down and got back up, make some noise right now. If he loves you and loves nobody else, come on, someone say, he loves me. In spite of everything that I have done. Come on, make some noise. He loves me. In spite of everything I have done. And I'm so thankful, Geraldine, that he disciplined me. Amen. I, I don't want a pretty sermon that said that I've been good all my life. No. It's not easy being a father. It's not easy being a man. And women, you can say right now, it's not easy being a mother. And it's not easy being a woman. Amen. Being a woman. Come on. Talk to me. Amen. But I'm so thankful. And I got to remember that everything I'm going through is not always from the devil. But it could be because I have gotten out of the will of God and he's whooping me. Talk to me right now. A lot of us don't want to be whooped. Amen. 
We blame the devil for our mistakes, but God said that I'm testing, I'm testing you because I love you. And I'm so thankful that he wants me, he disciplined, and puts me in time out, a time or two. And what is that time out? I ride out. It seemed to me God said, sit down. Come on, talk to me. Sit down, you're doing too much. Amen. Yeah. Sit down, you're talking too much. Amen. Sit down. That's not what I told you to say. Amen. You talking me, you talking for me, and I ain't put no words in your mouth. Just say, sit down. Yeah. A time or two. Yeah. And don't pork your lick out. Don't don't what's that? Don't be breathing on your chest. Someone just say it right now. Sit down. Yeah. A time or two. Yeah. I'm good. I'm great. Amen. Thank y'all for this Father Day. Make some noise. Say that. Thank you and happy Father's Day to God. Whoever heard of a child who is never being disciplined by its father. God, keep whooping me. Keep putting me in time out, God. Amen. Every time that I want to go astray, whoop me back on the narrow path. Amen. Let's stand up right now. Come on, y'all. Let's go, Great Faith. <laughs>
Order 4th that we have here at Greater Faith is for restoration. 